Hello guys and welcome back to another History and Politics Sports video with me, Ryan Gladman. Today is episode 9, uh, or 10 I think, of this Cold War history, uh, GC 9 to 1, Superpower Relations, um, NXL Cold War topic. Um, I think today we'll be looking at the Entente in the 1970s, a period of peace that developed in that decade, and it did end, it ended the first part of the Cold War, but afterwards it triggered the second part. Um, what we're looking at today, we're going to split it into two parts, the first five years and the second five years in the 1970s. Um, but before we do, I hope you're all well, um, all safe, and uh, just keep going at the moment, so we'll just, just keep abiding by the rules. Um, but in the meantime, if you are interested in this topic, join the Loose Gladys to Cold War. It's very useful to understand both the Soviet Union side and American sides with um, uh, later revealed documents that weren't available to the public at the time. Um, if you want to read that, it's about the ten pounds Amazon, so it's a very interesting read if you're interested in that. Um, but today, 1970s detente, um, and this came after the period of the Cuban Missile Crisis in the Prague Spring. So a lot of tensions were raised in the 1960s regarding the Cold War, um, and the threat of nuclear war during the Cuban Missile Crisis, especially, was a very, very prominent threat to a lot of countries. And the U.S. neither the Soviet Union wanted an actual nuclear war to develop, so they both enter some talks on limitation of their nuclear arms capabilities. Um, for example, in 1968 the USA was seeking to end the Cold War itself and um, the newly ele elected Richard Nixon, US President, hoped that if the USA could improve trade and technology with the Soviet Union, so improve trade links basically, it was hoped that they could make an offer or compromise of tr um, arms reduction and that the Soviet leader, leader Brezhnev might persuade his North um, Vietnamese ally, so um, China basically, to negotiate an end to the war. Um, and this idea of trade came in the idea of something called linkage, which is basically the idea of offering concessions, so prices and um, money for trade you're giving to one country and then you're giving back to some in return. Um, for example, the the Soviet, Union, the Soviet leader, uh, Brezhnev, was keen to gain access to US technology and actually further the grain sales uh, that the US was giving to the Soviet Union. So trade was both on it was on both uh, countries' minds to, to happen, and they saw the value in doing it because they thought they could be able to relieve tensions. Um, and actually, Nixon had visited China three months earlier um, in the nineteen sixty eight, and Brezhnev didn't. He acknowledged that, but he didn't want a US-Chinese ally uh, alliance to form. So he was trying to accelerate these trade talks to ensure that if the US did ally with China, it wasn't at the expense of the Soviet Union and there was no threat to the Soviet Union because of the Chinese ally that the US had give, uh, had gained. Um, and also, uh, in 1972, the SALT program started. So it's called SALT-1, it began in 1969, but then it was finalised in May 1972, and it's, it's for the Strategic Arms Limitations Talks. Um, and basically, it meant that the two superpowers agreed that there would be no further production of um, strategic ballistic missiles, which will basically be short-range, lightweight missiles that are fired into space and uh, are targeted on re initial release, but um, are very deadly and can, if they are stationed close to uh, an area, take not a long time to um, reach the destinations. And both powers also agreed that the submarines carrying nuclear weapons, such as these um, ballistic missiles, would only be produced when existing stocks of international ballistic missiles became obsolete. So when, inter when these, inter these ICBMs, as they were called, uh, different to the strategic ballistic missiles, when, the, when these um, stocks became obsolete, so when they sort of dried up a bit more, then um, these submarines carrying nuclear weapons underwater would be introduced a bit more because it's, it's a lesser threat to a lot of people underwater. Um, but again, th that compromise was due to this detente period of peace and the idea of we need peace so we need to make these agreements to ensure that um, nuclear peace can, can be uh, enhanced and progress in many countries. Um, so as, as, uh, as it said here, it says here the SALT 1 was significant because it was the first agreement between the superpowers about the way they can limit their arm, limited, um, or how they can limit their own arms capabilities and the number of nuclear weapons that both countries held. 
Um, so this was the first time in the whole of the Cold War from 1945 that uh, both countries actually slowed down in their arms capabilities um, and development. So the arms race that had been accelerated post World War II has now started to slow down. Um, and it's, the, it's in the hope that the tensions raised in the 1960s especially can decrease and both countries can find a, a meaningful way to move forward together um, in terms of not uh, encouraging nuclear war uh, weapons in other countries um, and hopefully by doing this the Cold War could end. Um, but the second part to this actually was the uh, 19... so basically the 1975 to 1980 period, the second part of the Taunt, and it uh, came in the form of the Helsinki Agreement in 1975, where the USA and the USSR, so the Soviet Union, along with 33 other nations, agreed um, or made declarations about three distinct international issues. Um, that they were called baskets by the people that signed it, but they're basically security, cooperation, and human rights. So these three international issues were declared by these 35 countries. And um, the security part actually it, it meant that there had to be recognition of European uh, borders and frontiers. So each country had to recognise another country's borders and couldn't really intrude without deliberate, um, without extensive compromise and agreement. Um, and the Soviet Union, with that, had to accept the existence of West Germany because that was a border between it, that's um, its own eastern part of Germany and the western Allied parts of Germany. So he had to accept these. He had to accept these um, borders, and it had been. But Germany had been a political ground, and it still had the Berlin Wall up, um, but it remained a little bit less hostile between the two um, the organizations, NATO and Warsaw Pact. Second part, cooperation. There was a, uh, basically a call for closer uh, links, uh, whether that's economic, scientific, or just cultural links, uh, in accepting traditions of different cultures and things like that. And then, because of this, it would lead to actually, um, it would lead to actual political agreements and uh, and treaties made between these countries. The last part was about human rights, and each uh, signature or each country that signed the, the Helsinki Agreement agreed to respect human rights and basic freedoms of every person in Europe, um, such as thought, speech, religion, um, and freedom from unfair uh, um, arrest, which is a fundamental right here in the UK. Um, they were all fundamental rights throughout Europe, and it meant that um, following the Salt One uh, Treaty, which was the first arrangement between the USA and USSR to slow down their arms development, this was another first step in sort of like a, a human rights uh, agreement. But the housing agreements was the first step in the whole Europe coming together to try and move forward post World War Two. It hadn't really, hadn't really been done. It was a sort of a select few countries, but now it's a more um, widely accepted agreement, and because it's a more widely accepted, accepted, accepted agreement, more countries are feeling obliged to um, to encourage it as well. So, um, and then so after 1975, in 1979, uh, Salt Two was signed. Uh, the treaty was signed. So Salt meaning Strategic Arms Limitations Talks, but this is number two. It actually began in 1974, but it was finalised in June 1979. And um, some, of the, some of these conditions were a limit of 2,400 strategic nuclear uh, delivery vehicles, a uh, limit of 1,320 multiple independently targetable, targetable re-entry vehicles, um, ban on construction of new land-based ICBM launchers, and um, the whole agreement, so some of those terms uh, amongst others, would last until 1985. Um, so this this sort two progression from sort one meant that there was a def there was definitely a want by both sides to develop uh, peace in this period, and because they wanted to do this, it showed their intent of establishing um, or trying to not establish another Cold War. Um, however, the US Senate actually did did refuse to ratify sort two. Uh, following the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979, which I think is it comes up, comes up in, in in about uh, two episodes of time, but because the Soviet Union invades Afghanistan um, after not really declaring it and not asking any other countries for permission, because a lot of I think the US had some stakes in Afghanistan at the time, because they invaded it in 1979, it sort of ended this, the time period, and the US Senate refused to ratify Sort Two. 
um, it had done before, but refused to ratify it any further because of that invasion and because they felt betrayed by the Soviet Union because they um, were increasing tensions once again. The nuclear hostilities that had arose prior to the detente um, had now arisen again and the US were uh, furious at the Soviet Union to do that because they blamed them for that for that rise. Um, but next episode we're going to look at Gorbachev, new uh, Soviet leader and his new thinking and some of these uh, conferences and summits that took place in the 1980s. Um, so we'll, we'll skip past the 1979 Afghanistan invasion for a while just to look at some of these new new thinkings of the Soviet Union and actually the conferences in the 1980s that um, had an impact in how the Cold War ended and um, because of the enhancement of agreements a lot more countries maybe felt a bit, a bit more comfortable in uh, rebellion against the Soviet Union leading to its fall in 1989 even though there was a lot more done to stop the spread of nuclear weapons more, com more countries may have felt um, confident about just getting rid of everything that is to do with nuclear weapon technology in their countries um, which often meant getting rid of the Soviet Union so yeah we'll look at that in the next episodes um, but that's it for today um, if you did enjoy the video please leave a like subscribe down below if you are new um, leave a comment if you enjoyed the video or you want other um, you have other suggestions for future videos um, but I'll see you probably later today or tomorrow for another Cold War episode thanks for watching